Hello, hello. Okay, so up top, I identify as beautiful. Yep, that's, you can see. Uh, if you don't have eyes, you can hear it. I am very attractive. And that's what people tell me all the time. I'm not even conceited. They, they just say it every time and that's all I hear. I could be going through the worst day. I could post a picture on Instagram and be like, I'm really having a bad time with depression. I don't want to live. And underneath the comments, we're like, yes, bitch, you look amazing. Yes, slay. That depression is killing. What kind of depression do you have? I want just a little bit. That's all they care about is how I look. And it's stupid. Looks are good, but like, you can be a mess, right? A lot of things could just not be going well. Like, I feel like I look like a really nice designer bag, like a Birkin, but then you look really closely and the thread is unraveling. <laughs> I'm a Birkin bag that has like a half-eaten sandwich in it from two weeks ago. I got tampons that's missing a ramper. <laughs> and then 12 years of unfiled taxes. That's where it is. That's what kind of designer bag I am. Yeah, I, I have a lot of quirks about me. I'm a high functioning depressed person, so that means I can't clean my house. It's a mess. I can do everything except clean. I'm very much a hoarder. Oh my God, you know the show Hoarders? Don't do that. Some of your cousins are on Hoarders. Don't do that. Hoarders is a show is where they come to clean people's homes who are like really, really disgusting. But usually they open the door and it's an old lady in a bonnet with a, with a robe with holes in it and she's acting all coy like, oh, what are you guys doing here? Bitch, you know why we here. You got boxes everywhere. All your cats are fucking each other. The plants called 911. You know why the fuck we here. Except for me, I'm an actress, so, you know, I get on hoarders, I open up the door, I'm already like crop top, hair slayed. I'm like, oh, did I book? <laughs> tell, my, tell my manager, offer only, okay? <laughs> Disgusting, yeah, I'm so nasty. I had my clothes on my bed, then I moved it to the floor, then I put it on an ottoman, and I left my clothes there for months. I, was, I left my clothes there for so long, I started tucking in my clothes. <laughs> I was like, close, you are working so hard, get some rest, you know? And I started telling my friends, I was like, I have a problem. And they're like, why don't you just get a cleaning person? <laughs> oh, maid, is that, did I say it wrong? <laughs> okay, cleaning person, you guys don't have one? So just me, black person, I'm the 1%? <laughs> America has changed. Am I a Republican now? <laughs> Am I <a> Rockefeller? <laughs> Don't, don't be shy, okay? You too can get a cleaning person if you spend half your unemployment on a cleaning person. <laughs> That's redistribution of wealth, okay? I give back to my community. Uh, so I got on this app called Handy and I wanted to figure out like what kind of cleaning person I wanted. Uh, I knew that I wanted them to be like, you know, somewhat ethnic. I definitely didn't want them to be white at all uh, cause y'all can't clean. Uh, <laughs> You just can't, you can fix my iPhone, you can come in and fix my lock, you cannot clean my house, you can't. I see y'all getting tight on here, um, but on Twitter, there was a viral thread that asked, do you wash your legs? And y'all said, nah, so I'm not trusting you with my bathtub. So sorry, Sarah, so sorry. <laughs> so I, I ended up picking up this guy named uh, Manuel and I thought he was gonna be like an older guy, like maybe 5'4", have a family, he's gonna come in, judge me, but say nothing, you know, real cute. But do you know, this 25-year-old man showed up at my door, 25-year-old, hot. I mean, he had abs everywhere, abs on here, abs on his neck. It was the dead of winter, he had no coat on, just muscles. He had a bag with nothing in it. I was like, is he coming to clean my house or drop off some dick? This is crazy. And that's when I knew the pandemic was bad, when hot people were like, I have to clean, okay? I start calling up all my big titty friends. I was like, girl, you're gonna have to start working soon. Do you have a mop? <laughs> this is the emergency right now. So anyway, he comes in and, and I'm gay, but I'm not blind. So I can see him the whole time. I'm looking hard, like real auntie energy. Like, ooh, you sure did get big. <laughs> you want some water? You want some juice? How's school? Just disgusting. <laughs> uh, then he started talking and it just shamwowed all the moisture inside me. Yeah, it shamwowed it. Um, I hate when men talk, it's so nasty. Um, 
But then he picked up my stove and started cleaning underneath my stove. I was like, is he trying to turn me out right now? <laughs> is he changing my sexuality? Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a very much a uh, very uh, gay woman. I don't know if you could tell by my posture. I'm a lesbian. Uh, I've, been, <laughs> I've been gay for eight years and uh, people still don't respect my gay because I am femme. Um, I don't know if you know what femme means, but it dresses like, I dress like I look like I want men to talk to me, but I don't. Please don't talk to me. Please don't talk to me unless you book Euphoria. I definitely want to be on that show. I have the actual drug hours and time to be on that fucking show. And I still look young, so get me in there, coach. <laughs> Yeah, but they don't, they don't respect my gay at all. They keep telling me that I'm gonna be back to dick. And it's just like, ah, uh, you are a terrible spokesperson for dick. You just are. Great people, just terrible at spokesperson for dick. Uh, the last guy I went to his house and I got all the way there and he had uh, an air mattress with no air in it. No, no air in it. No pump. Like, I could have stopped at Target for you, sir. Like, what's going on? I don't deserve air. Uh, so he took his crumpled up piece of paper bed and put it in the middle like it was a magic card Carpet, and he, with all the confidence, was like, yeah, we're gonna have a good time. And um, of course I had sex with him. And <laughs> in the middle of it, in the middle of it, I started crying and without missing a beat, without missing a beat, he was like, I know it's so good. <laughs> yeah, I don't need that. I don't need that. It's something about dudes, something about that cis straight man energy that you see tears and you immediately think joy. Yeah, I don't need that in the bedroom. Oh, I see you all got quiet. I was crying. Uh, because I got a bad back, y'all. I, I need comfort. I'm gay for the bedding right now, all right? I caught a Charlie horse in my soul. That's what freaking happened. Um, I truly hate the confidence of cis straight dudes. I hate it so much. I remember the guy that I was dating, I, I decided to get plastic surgery. I wanted to get boobs because I didn't want to work on my personality. And... <laughs> He immediately thought that I was getting these tits for him. Immediately. He was like, no, I love you for who you are. You are amazing. Come on. Like, you don't... I was like, sir, you live in a studio apartment. You think that I'm getting $10,000 worth of tits for you. That's so crazy. <laughs> these are for the next nigga. And the next nigga was a woman. So, uh... <laughs> Joke's on me. Thanks so much. I'm Cindy Washington. <laughs>